As we explained earlier, the core requirement of the ATRQM rule is that you as a creditor must make a reasonable determination of the consumer borrower's ability to repay. This, of course, is already at the heart of your business as a lender. There is no legal requirement or any supervisory expectation that you make any qualified mortgages at all. Writing a qualified mortgage is simply another way to demonstrate compliance with the basic ability to repay rule. A benefit you get from writing a QM is that it gives you a presumption of compliance. There are two kinds of presumptions. The safe harbor or irrebuttable presumption means that the lender is considered to have complied with the ability to repay requirement. That means, for instance, that in the event a consumer alleges that the creditor violated the ability to repay rule, a safe harbor QM is conclusively presumed, as a matter of law, to have been made in compliance with the rule. The rebuttable presumption QM is what it sounds like. While there is a presumption that the creditor complied with the ability to repay requirement, that presumption can be overcome. You may already be familiar with the rebuttable presumption. The prior higher price mortgage loan ability to repay rule offered creditors a way to create a rebuttable presumption, but there was no safe harbor prior to these new rules. What distinguishes a safe harbor QM from a rebuttable presumption QM? The answer is the APR on the loan. In all other respects, the two are the same. As we explained earlier, this is one of the areas where small creditors were given special consideration by the CFPB under the rule. For all covered transactions issued by small creditors, both first and junior lien loans, and for junior lien loans originated by any creditor, a safe harbor QM is one with an APR that is less than 3.5% above the average prime offer rate, or APOR. First lien loans originated by creditors other than small creditors have a lower safe harbor QM threshold. They are safe harbor QMs if the APR is less than 1.5% above APOR. First lien loans originated by small creditors and any subordinate lien loan with an APR of 3.5% or more above APOR are rebuttable presumption QMs. First lien QMs originated by creditors other than small creditors have a rebuttable presumption if the APR is 1.5% or more above APOR. The method of calculating that APR threshold is another piece of the new rule that should be familiar to you. Prior to the January 2014 rules, you were calculating the higher priced mortgage loans for purposes of the earlier versions of the ability to repay rule and mandatory escrow rules by adding 1.5% to APOR. You'll notice we said that QMs made by small creditors have a higher safe harbor threshold than other first lien QMs. What do we mean by small creditor? To qualify as a small creditor, you must meet both an asset test and an originations test. Most FDIC supervised institutions meet these asset and originations tests, so the special small creditor QMs may be an important option for many of you. The asset test threshold will be adjusted each year, so be sure to check the CFPB's website for the applicable asset threshold. For 2014, the threshold was $2.028 billion in assets as of December 31, 2013. Only your assets count, not those of any affiliates. The asset test is determined as of the last day of the preceding calendar year. To meet the originations test, you must have originated 500 or fewer first lien covered loans in the preceding year. Loans made by bank affiliates do count toward that 500 threshold. For the next segment of this video, segment five, we'll discuss using qualified mortgages to comply with the ATR rule.